Good morning, everybody. This is Laurie of Laurie's Heirloom. So, as you can see, I have gotten the, I've done my best embroidery project drawn onto that piece of linen that we were working on in the last video. So it's basically drawn the same as the pattern. I did make a couple changes um, just uh, for my own aesthetic. I don't have the clay buttons that were packaged with this particular um, embroidery pattern, so I'm going to see if I can find some. I don't know. I may have to look at um, a completely different type of button. I may have to put something else here, but it's not going to be a big issue for me. Now, I will say that this is a pretty Christmassy pattern. Uh, we have the holly leaves and berries. I'm probably going to do the initials L-A-C-E, which is how I sign all of my art. And I'll just write 2020 in this friction ink down there at the bottom. And then I may or may not leave it. I can just, you know, use the iron to remove that if I want to. Um, that's just basically the way I sign my art. So there is that. And then yesterday I completed the homespun table topper embroidery, which is the echo stitching here. So let me move this out of the way. So each one of these blocks has been echo stitched. I need to use a roller to remove some of the lint from this. Oh, it's pretty bad. So the next step is to cut. I need to square it up. I'm going to just trim it. And then if you recall in the last video I did, I mentioned that I plan to um, cover the back. I'm going to use some warm and natural cover the back with another piece of the um, ticking. Then I'll be adding my uh, straight edge binding. So the very first thing I need to do is square this embroidered piece up. I'm going to leave a little bit of a lip on the ticking that's sort of hanging out. So then, like I said, I'm going to give this a good press, steamy press. Feels like it turned out real well. I don't see any odd, strange things that I don't like. Okay, so the next thing in the process is I need to decide how big I want this piece of warm and natural. I don't think it needs to be all the way to the edge. A uh, piece of fabric is going to be the ticking that's going to be applied to the uh, warm and natural. What to do is apply the binding or the batting, and I'll be doing that with my temporary adhesive basting spray. So I'm going to go halfway ish and spray this basting adhesive to this. I'm not spraying it on my fabric.
well. Apparently the camera didn't turn on when I thought I had turned it on. So I have stitched all these lines, as you can see. I did half, and then I flipped it this way and did the other half coming back this direction. And I'm trying to decide now how I want to proceed. If I want to go ahead and do a second set running in the opposite direction, or if I would like to just add some... I think I'm going to just add a little bit of decorative stitching. Alrighty, so I'm ready to cut the four strips that I need but I'm actually going to only cut two at a time because when you do that square edge binding, you have to do opposing sides first. Put our first strip, which has to extend beyond these outer corners by at least an inch. Just know that it needs to be at least an inch. It's better if it's a little bit more. So just kind of get get an idea about where your center is. Um, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And then one, two, three. So right here would be the center of this. I'm going to pin it right there. Here it is at this stage. Very homespun looking, still dealing with the lint from traveling back and forth, but that's okay, I don't mind. So I have these lines running vertically all along the long edges, and I don't want the short edges to have the pieces of edging in the opposite direction. I don't want that. I want them to be running the same direction. So this is how I had the fabric folded when I was cutting out my stripes or my strips actually for those long edges. If I use the same method to cut the end pieces then as you can see, the stripes are going to be running opposite, basically opposite. And that is not the look I want. So I have to refold my fabric. So this is the side edge that I've already applied right here and as you can see it's running in the same direction as my fabric so is this right here here's the edge I cut off or that I cut and applied this is what I want for the short ends so I need two and they need to be at least one inch longer then the finished edge is going to be on my project. this off even with the edge of our project. Move these out of the way. Now you can use a, um, a rotary cutter if you wish or you can use a pair of scissors if you prefer. Because this is so wide, 
I'm going to use a rotary cutter this time. So we line it up right along the edge of the project right here. And we just cut this off like so. one stitched and I'm going to stitch the second one and of course I'm sure oh many of you are thinking why does she have that cut so wide well yes that was a mistake I in my mind I was thinking that there would be more um, fabric underneath this but there isn't clearly so I don't need a big fat wide binding which means I will be trimming all of it down and that's okay at this stage because I can still fold it under exactly the way I would have if I had made the pieces less wide. So I'm, I'm going to just leave this piece as it is. I'm going to line up my stripes, stitch it down, and then I'll trim my binding down to a reasonable width. I have all four of the binding edges attached. The next little bit here is going to be oh, there are, sort of getting this down to a manageable size. I, for some strange reason, had it in my mind that my binding was going to be this wide. And that's just not the case on this particular project. start on this side right here. I'm going to fold this down right along this edge and you can finger press it or you can take it to the um, ironing board and I'm going to flip it to the back like so. You do one of the two ends like so. Now you're going to have a folded edge. So you need to hold that folded edge and then fold over your the long part. I don't know what I'm trying to say. The end of your uh, binding on the short end and then fold it over again and you will have a very nice let me get this piece. 
goal in doing this is you're hiding the raw edge and you're hiding the um, stitched edge. All right. So there's those two ends and on the front side right here Okay, we're going to do the other side. I am really pleased that we are at this stage of this project. Um, I think that the ticking looks really pretty with it. I like the sort of kind of quilted backside. And I love, seriously love, the utilitarian aspect of this. It, I don't mind a bit if this gets something spilled on it. It will get used on my dining room table. So if something spills, this is completely washable. I have no problem with that happening. It's not a precious piece of Irish linen that I don't ever want to have anything happen to. You know, that's, that's one of the things that I love about it. I know it will get used. It will also work well on my kitchen table. So I have two places where I can use something like this. My kitchen table is a um, Havana table, so it's wood with marble, and the wood, um, I believe it is an antique, um, and the wood needs some TLC. So if you put something hot, like a hot plate, a hot dish, a hot cup of coffee, you know, the heat from that ceramic or porcelain or plastic or whatever will, or metal will just, you know, eek and leach into that wood and it causes staining and all sorts of problems. Bird embroidery project that will be going back to my daughter's house with me this afternoon. I don't know if I, I don't recall if I showed you the... I did, yeah, we talked about these colors. Okay, so there's that red work that I'm doing. And I will need, that's what I need to do is take care of some Warm and Natural. So I'll have Warm and Natural under this. I am stitching it right now using silk, 50 weight silk thread um, and a very tiny sharp needle. And once these are stitched down, I will add Warm and Natural. I think I'm going to go ahead and do two layers of Warm and Natural. I, f I have found, I believe, that that's what I want to do for items that are protective articles on my table. Okay, so the next time you see me, some of this project will have been done, if not all of it. I'm going to, my plan is to start on this. I need to do something like this. It's it's just calling to me. So a little bit of embroidery, a little bit of hand stitching, and that's my plan. We'll see what happens. We'll see if that actually works. Okay guys, I'm kind of filming this as I go. I'm um, currently editing. I'm going to try to put this on the video that I'm currently editing, but I wanted to show you what's in here. This arrived yesterday right before I left um, to go um, back to my daughter's house. Um, this is part of a new project that I'll be starting as soon as I have all of the rest of the pieces and the parts which haven't come yet. But this is the fun part right here. So let me get this open and we'll take a peek. So pretty. This is wool felt. And I wanted to show you these fun colors. This is called, the collection is called uh, either Summer Melon or Melon. Well, if I'm remembering, let's see what it says. No, that was a different one that I was looking at and it wasn't available. I wanted larger pieces and the melon was only available in a small, um, 
squares. It was literally just these tiny six by six. And I thought, no, I need bigger pieces. So I ended up going with the nine by 12. It's 10 pieces, nine by 12 um, inches spring vacation collection. And it is a merino wool felt. It's made in the US and I purchased it off of Amazon, but you will see we have sort of a lovely creamy color. It looks like it's showing up correctly on the monitor. And then this pretty turquoise color, this beautiful robin, well, kind of a robin's egg blue, more of a, what I consider to be like an Easter blue. And then this, oh, this color is one of my favorites. This blue right here. And that also looks correct on the camera screen. This is kind of a blended melon and peach or rose, which is beautiful. I love these blended colors. And they're not that hard to make. If you have a felting needle, um, you can take a piece of felt and just add color if you have some roving um, that's that's a way to do it okay here's kind of a mauve color kind of a buttercream here's another blended um, it's kind of like oh gosh like peach it's peach with a deeper peach mixed in and then this is kind of a pale marigold Color. That looks a little bit washed out on the screen. Let me see if I can turn it. There we go. Right here, no, right here is the correct shade. We are going to do some wool felt applique. There is a book I have ordered that should be here in the next couple of days, and it shows basically how to take your pieces of wool felt and just transform them into a, just a plethora of wonderful little delightful things. Um, I had started out looking at the idea of doing a very structured needle case um, and then there was a pin keeper that was shaped as a box, truly like a little tiny box out of the wool felt uh, so I saw that and I thought, okay, there's just too many things. So I ordered that and when it arrives, we will be um, going through the book, choosing projects, and hopefully creating some little, little delightful, wonderful things with our wool felt. So I just thought I would try to get this added to the video. Sorry about the noise. Try to get this added to the video that I am currently editing. So thank you, and um, if this is the end, please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you wish. Have a wonderful, fabulous Thursday, November 5th of 2020, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.